And today, if I say who would like to work in, uh, in a as a fixed income portfolio manager, I don't get a single hand up. If I say who wants to be a hedge fund manager, maybe I get two or three people. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, it was hot stuff. If I ask about like trading stocks, working for an index, like, like nobody wants to do that. If I say private equity, like all the hands are up. years ago, had you asked finance students what area they'd like to go into, most would have said investment banking, the sell side, the buy side. But today, it's none of them that capture the attention of graduates. Today's focus is the world of private equity. In this interview, I talk to Ludo Falapu, professor of financial economics at the Said Business School in Oxford and expert in all things private equity, about why PE firms are more popular than ever with no sign of slowing down. When you say teach private equity, what, do you, what exactly do you mean by that? So <laughs> I, we have a, a range of courses in private equity that are electives for MBA students, executive MBA students. Uh, I have executive courses uh, online on, on private equity. Um, one that did, I did this morning remotely uh, on valuation of private assets. So there is a range of courses, but usually then graduate level, right? It starts at the master level, MBA level. So um, back when I was training to be a <clears throat> portfolio manager, it was very much fundamental analysis and bottom-up valuation and discounted cash flows. Um, now back then, we're talking 10, 15 years ago, the, pro the world of private equity was certainly significant, but it's grown quite a lot. I'm wondering if you can just uh, help to explain how the environment uh, has changed around private equity. And that, I mean, there's just been such a growth into that as an asset class. Can you just explain some of the you know, dynamics that have been happening? I think it, it's down to, to the perceived return um, of the asset class by, by a number of people. It really picked up early 2000s when I actually started my, my PhD and started working on private equity. <coughs> so at that time, the stock market, at least the main indices, are made up large cap and they started not doing so well. So this is called like the, the lost decade for stocks, which is in fact just the large cap not doing very well during the 2000s. Mm. Um, and this is where you had all this smart beta and all these, these guys showing up, which was effectively always do any kind of weight but value weighting so that then you would always outperform value weighted index because large cap hadn't done well. And so right. you had people saying, okay, I need to equally weight or weight by the price or like whatever it, it, it was. And so you, you, you had the stock market major indices not doing so well. And private equity actually did just like small cap or mid cap US equity. But compared to the most famous indices, it was, not, it was doing much better mm -hmm. uh, because the large cap were not doing well. So, so starting in the 2000s, people started allocating to private equity. Um, and because they were, they were thinking that the returns would, <coughs> were, were, were higher, and they were disappointed by public equity large cap, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is what they were invested in for most of these asset owners. And then in 2008 came the crisis. Even though they were levered, they did actually pretty well during the crisis because they could call capital in, in, in the downturn. They, there was not that many bankruptcies because they could renegotiate the debt. They had quite a lot of, of power of mm -hmm. the many constituents. And so they did pretty well during 2008 crisis. And then after that, the interest rates went to zero. Prices started getting very high. Uh, and, 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 and people, even though then the, the S&P 500 large cap did well, People were still nervous that this, this was, the, the, the expected returns on public equity wouldn't be that high. And, and, and then there was this belief that then private equity has done well in the 2000s, 2008, compared to the large cap US. And so they, 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 they would continue and only they could save people from the zero interest rate trap because all these people had to save money for pensions. And if they have no, if, if, if it's 0% interest rate, they have to find a golden goose. And so then private equity was then thought and still is, thought as like, okay, this is the saver, this is Santa Claus, and they're gonna, just gonna distribute us the returns we badly need. And then it went, it's skyrocketing over the last five, six years, then private equity together, it's now more than 10 trillion. Uh, it's, it's a very, very Ten serious. Trillion. Can you give us an idea of sort of how that number has changed? So, so <clears> we, <throat> we, we, start, we probably passed the one trillion like in 04, 05, it was 100 billion in, 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 2000, in 2000. So you'd go like 100 billion, then you go to one trillion in 05, 06, and then, and then it keeps on going exponentially to like passing 10 trillion just now. Um, it has added over the last five years, just like one trillion a year or something like that. 
and, and that's quite a bit of, 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 of money. So like all the stocks in the world is about 60 trillion, just the US is 30 trillion. So being up to 10 trillion um, is, is pretty punchy. Um, and is there a, um, <clears throat> a metric to use to measure how private equity generally has done versus public equity like an S&P Yeah, we, 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 we know how to do that. And, and you hear different stories because people will use them different benchmarks, right. I would think strategically, <laughs> to, so that they can sell what they want to sell, right? Mm. So a lot of people, private equity has one of the characteristics that it has a lot of fees. So on average, a private equity fund would charge about 7% a year. So it's a lot of money to be distributed and Re so far, relative, relative to, I mean, other you know, public equity funds. A hedge fund would be at 4%, at 3.5%, at uh, an active mutual fund is at 2%, uh, a passive one is more like 1% or less. So, so it's like completely like an outlier. Uh, I mean, at 7% is many leverage buyouts, which is the biggest chunk of private equity. Some mm. of the sub-sectors of private equity charge a bit less, but it, but it is pretty high fees. And so that leaves a lot of money for like the consultant, the intermediaries, et cetera, to sell something that has so much uh, fees uh, um, uh, collection. And so you have a lot of people whose income depends very strongly on, on, on selling the private equity dream. Mm -hmm. um, and so when, when they have, we have enough data now to, to, to know what's going, to, to, to know the answers, but it's easy for people to say, well, compared to like MSCI World over the last 10, 20 or 30 years, it's doing okay. And, mm -hmm. and, and when I point out, well, you know, private equity is mainly US, MSCI World mm -hmm. has been taken down mainly by non-US stocks. And so yeah. that's maybe not the most pertinent uh, 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 comparison. Um, same with the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is large cap. It's not really what private equity invest into. So in the 2000s, private equity looks good compared to the S&P 500 because it's bad. But since... The S&P 500 is doing okay, like 2006, 2007, then private equity is like the S&P 500 mm -hmm. uh, in, in the US. Against small cap, mid cap, it has already been in the same range. So we have the answer, it's just then people will present only part of the evidence in order to sell their stuff. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's why the, the myth can continue. You have so many people who have a very strong interest in that story, that myth to, to be believed. Now, one of the sort of you know, mega trends that we see happening in the world of investing currently is the um, the growth in ESG investing. And I think, you know, even 5, 10, 15 years ago, it was still a relatively small part of people's mandates. And now it's becoming a much bigger one, uh, particularly as the younger investors care more about those themes. How has ESG investing affected the way that private equity runs today? It's important to, to note that private equity, if you want to make a difference when you invest, um, private equity is a way to do it. Private mm -hmm. markets, private equity is a way to do it. So if you are someone is really serious about having a positive impact and doing proper ESG, then private markets is a place to mm -hmm. do so. Mm -hmm. On a public company, you will achieve very little by excluding some stocks from a portfolio or doing like mm -hmm. all these things that people do when they invest in ESG mutual funds or SRI mutual funds. So you achieve very little on public markets if you're serious about it. So a necessary condition is to use private equity widely defined, so then including venture capital, et cetera. But then in private equity so far, we do have some funds that do it well, like that they are really impact funds and they are really looking at, at, at their impact seriously and taking ESG as, you know, having additionality, so really making a difference. Mm -hmm. But by and large, what has been done so far in private equity is more like creating a narrative mm -hmm. of like a win-win so that don't worry, I'm not going to hurt your returns, but you're also going to do good to the planet. And that, that just doesn't exist. Right. Um, and so there is a lot of, of, of BS on, on, on that front, which is highly regrettable. Unless, and, unless you know, something like improving the state of uh, the workplace for employees or increasing diversity did necessarily you know, improve the profitability of the company. Yeah, but then it, 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 it is not addition, additional. So if, if mm. and, and it's a bit of a weird argument. I mean, it, it, it's plausible, but it's a bit weird to say people so far were these wild capitalist people only thinking about the money mm. and they hadn't realized by being nice to people, they could make even more money. So it's like people were not greedy <laughs> enough. So yeah, like you, you say you need ESG because people are too greedy, but then you're explaining to me that they were not greedy enough because they were leaving money on the table. Right. And if they would do good, they would realize that they were leaving money on the table. Now it's plausible, but, but, but it's a stretch, right? right, right. So you, well, at least you need to be coherent. Like, so don't, don't say that then your problem was that these people were evil capitalists, only mm -hmm. profit focused. 
and just say these people were extremely naive. They didn't realize that right. they could make more money by investing in, uh, more in their employees and the like. And these poor souls need to have their eyes open. And, and that's great if it's the case, okay? Maybe people were making that mistake. They underestimated the, the importance of having well-treated employees around them. Mm. And, and if they realize that, that's great. But, but that's not something un unusual. It's not a new way of thinking <coughs> about things. You're still maximizing profit. It's just you didn't realize that, that, that by that being nicer to, to people that, that <laughs> would maximize gonna profit. It's going to help that. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, I'm not even sure about where these two sectors meet in the middle, but... The world of digital assets uh, and the world of private equity um, are there. I'm trying to even think like, how is private equity looking to adopt the world of digital assets or invest in the world of private equity? Assets? Would do anything that brings money, right? Uh -huh. they, they care only about one thing: is making as much money as possible, right? Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of ESG thing as well. It's like sure. you have a subset of funds that says, okay, we, we we care about the other thing. Private equity would have an ESG rationale and and would have a, an ESG disclosure, etc., because they need to, and that's on their way to make money. So um, the digital assets can bring in some cash and private equity is well positioned to, to capitalize on that. So if you have like crypto exchanges where these poor souls go and to buy Bitcoin and the like and, uh, and do not pay attention to transaction costs, which they don't, and they just buy because they need to buy, then of course private equity is very happy with that state of the world. Mm -hmm. They just show up and say, oh, you don't care about price, or, or about costs, uh, you know, I'm going to enjoy the ride here. Um, so, so, so private equity is going to intervene in all kinds of, 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 of spaces of in like cryptocurrency exchanges and the like, and, or, or, or mining of coins or, or anything that can bring money. Um, and when it comes to companies, if a company would perform better, would, would generate more cash if it's digitalized, which is usually the case. So think about media, for example. There is a lot of presence of private equity to accelerate the digitalization. I see. And, and the like. So mm. anywhere where you can make money and you need a bit of, of like technique, private equity is there. They have tons of cash because of all the fees they collect. So if there is an area mm. where you need the best computer scientist, you need the best lawyer, you need this, you need that, private equity will have it because they have so much money to, to, to pay for these people, right? Because of the fees they charge. Is there, um, I imagine there is pretty decent evidence to show that public companies are much slower to advance from a technological of point course. of view than private ones. Of course, by construction. Yeah. Because when you are a, a, a management team in a, in, in a public company, you are always worried about, oh, am I going to be promoted? Am I going to be fired? I need right. to please the boss. I should not contradict the boss because then, you know, then, uh, and, and, and I should please my shareholders. What do my shareholders want? What does this stock analyst want? Like they are 25 years old and they are writing reports about you. What is it I should do to please them or things like that? Mm. You, you, you're not focused on, on the bottom line. When you're in practical hands, only if one thing matters is that this company needs to be worth more money in three years from now. Yeah. And we will do anything it takes it's, to do it's so. It's much cleaner and efficient in terms of like where you're trying to go. Well, at, yeah, at least the objective is, is, <clears throat> is pretty, you know, single dimension and, and everybody's on board. Everybody has, has their own money on, in the deal and then everybody's lined up to, to, to satisfy that objective. And so by construction, they will go yeah. faster. And so speaking to you as a professor, do you see most of your students, well, I guess all of your students are much more interested in private equity than, than public equity. Do you, do you feel that that's a, um, a, a shift that's going to continue is that more and more people will be interested in moving into the world of private equity? It's, it, it's, it's really interesting you ask this question. I started 20 years ago to teach like asset management. At the time, I would, if I would do a poll saying, okay, who wants to be a trader? I would probably have half of a room. Mm -hmm. um, I say, you know, who wants to do that like fixed me. income? Some <laughs> people would say, yes, I want to do fixed income. Um, hedge funds, there would be lots of people, investment banking, etc. There, there would be people on, on, on everything, including like fixed income trading and, 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 and the like, a stock analyst and, and so on, was, was pretty sought after. Over time, you saw the evolution among the students. And today, if I say, who would like to work in, uh, in a as a fixed income portfolio manager, I don't get a single hand up. Mm. If I say, who wants to be a hedge fund manager, maybe I get two or three people. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, it was hot stuff. Mm -hmm. If I ask about like trading stocks, working for an index, like, like nobody wants to do that. If I say private equity, like all the hands are up. Right. And, and you can understand that because it is, it is the best of everything because you get, you get better paid mm -hmm. because of all the they collect. And, and you get a job that is a lot more interesting. I mean, what is more interesting if you're finance minded than directly investing in companies, influencing their future and, and being part of a company's journey? Mm. If you compare that to like, okay, here are bonds of many companies, try to price them and see which bond we need to buy. It's completely boring. 
you invest in private debt or private equity, you actually go and, 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 and visit mm. these companies. Uh, you, you do that also on public markets, but it's a lot more due diligence. You're much more hands-on. So the jobs are a lot more interesting. Yeah. And you get rewarded handsomely if, 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 if you do well. If you look out five years, um, what do you think the major themes are that we're going to be talking about when it comes to the, the world of investing? A very general question, I know, but... Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I'm not sure because five years is, is, is tomorrow and I think the, the situation won't be that, that different. It will still be that the public markets will be, you know, yeah. ish. There will be some IPOs, maybe there will still be some SPACs mainly doing I IPOs think you're more and, like, and private equity will be a big deal. If we're in a higher interest rate environment, does that affect the private? I mean, that... A, 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 a little bit, of... but, I, but, but I think it, it, it's second order. Right. It, it, I, and I don't think we will move to a world of high interest rates suddenly. Uh, well, listen, Ludo, this has been such a great discussion. Thank you very much for your time indeed, and uh, good luck with everything. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for Thanks, having Ludo. me. Thank you. Trying to predict markets is nothing short of Sisyphean. It's as futile as trying to predict the future. But luckily, that's not the goal of an investor. The goal of investing is to make the best asset selection based on the available information and the risk-reward profile you are presented with, and do that consistently. We don't know what the future holds, but by keeping up with what the experts are saying about the future of investing, well, that does give you edge. If you'd like to read more on the topic, please go to footsierussell.com forward slash research for more information.